Fish Biology This is the general anatomy of a fish. In order to successfully design and operate a life support system for fish, one must have a basic understanding of their physiological requirements. Fish breathe through their gills by extracting oxygen dissolved in the water. Respiration is a two-step process, as illustrated in the picture. Step 1 is the inflow of water through the open mouth, followed by contraction, when the mouth is closed in order to build up enough pressure to pump the water out through the gills. Because water contains relatively little dissolved oxygen, fish must be efficient in extracting it from the water. There are two main points which contribute to the efficiency of their breathing system. One is the unidirectional flow of water through their gills, which avoids inefficient mixing of fresh air with expired air, and the second, is the counter flow principle, where water and blood flow in opposite directions, ensuring, maximum gas exchange. In this way, the O2 content in the blood can rise to the same concentration as the surrounding water. The gills are not only for breathing, but also for water and ion exchange. However, this process differs between freshwater and marine fish. The bodily fluids of freshwater fish have a higher salt content than the surrounding water, which allows water to penetrate into the bodies of the fish. To compensate for this permanent dilution of their bodily fluids, they actively transport salts into their blood and excrete diluted urine. Marine fish have a lower salt content than the surrounding sea water meaning their bodies naturally lose water. To compensate for this, they drink seawater and actively excrete the excess salt via concentrated urine. In most types of bony fishes, the swim bladder regulates their specific gravity which enables them to remain neutrally buoyant without having to waste energy swimming. They are able to transport gases such as oxygen carbon dioxide, or nitrogen from their blood, via the gas gland to the swim bladder, and back to the blood. Some fish species, mainly cartilage fish, or species that live close to the sea floor do not have a swim bladder, and therefore sink to the ground when not moving. Fish perceive their environment with different senses, the picture shows a fish's sensory organs. We have only outlined the most important ones. The lateral line, rod cells, register changes in water pressure. When swimming, pressure waves are reflected off of obstacles. This gives the fish a kind of spatial perception, similar to an echo sounder. Eyes, for vision. However, they are often of little use as a result of turbidity and the light absorption properties of water. The nostril, which is responsible for their sense of smell. Eels can smell 1 milliliter of diluted perfume in 58 times the volume of Lake Constance, which represents 48 cubic kilometers of water. Taste cells in the mouth and on barbels. Fish living on the ground chew through the seabed, discarding unpleasant solids and particles. Barbels across the whole body are responsible for their tactile sense. The inner ear is responsible for hearing and is found in the skull bone where it is separated from the water. Minnows can hear as well as humans. Furthermore, fish are not stupid. They can crack, crunch, drum and chirp to communicate. Like all animals, fish convert food to flesh. In this process, energy is primarily lost, in providing energy for the fish to move, reproduce, and survive. However, it is also lost in the conversion of one type of fat or protein into another. In the process of catabolism, oxygen must be supplied, and carbon dioxide, and ammonia removed to encourage fish growth. We can say that the essential parameters for living, and healthy fish in your aquaculture system are, fresh or clean water that contains no ammonia or CO2, enough dissolved oxygen, enough feed and unsuitable water temperature and pH value. Other factors such as light, the holding density or spawning grounds are less important and vary more between species. You will hear more details about the essential chemical water parameters such as oxygen, P2, 
pH and nitrogen compounds in the water chemistry part of Module 5, Recirculating Aquaculture. As we have already heard, in terms of reproduction, the highest potential for fish growth is at higher temperatures. This is mainly because fish are cold-blooded, and cannot maintain a constant body temperature. Their body temperature is determined by the water temperature, and is approximately 0.1 to 1 degree above the temperature of the surrounding water due to the energy released from their metabolic processes. In terms of feeding, some simple rules will guarantee that your fish are properly fed. Several smaller feeds distributed throughout the day are better than one large feed. Nitrifying bacteria in the biofilter also need time to work. Less is more, not only in terms of water quality, but also fish. Overfeeding is harmful. The fish should eat their food portions within 10 minutes. How much should we feed our fish? The table above provides example calculations for tilapia. The feed conversion ratio, FCR, describes the amount of feed needed to produce a 1 kg weight gain in the fish. This ratio determines the nutritional and economical value of feed. It is more accurate to use the dry weight of feed to calculate the FCR, since the moisture content can vary, as a result of storage or drying. With more than 20,000 known species, fish form the largest group of vertebrates on Earth. But only a small percentage of them are suitable for aquaculture. Four potential species will be presented on the following slides. The tilapia ranks among the world's most commonly cultivated fish species. On the left, you can see the wild brown variety, and on the right the pink cultivation variety. The advantages of tilapia are, that it is a robust fish and grows very quickly under good conditions, it can be ready for harvest after 6 to 10 months. As an omnivorous species, it has a large feeding spectrum and can also consume vegetable protein sources very well, making it possible to use vegetable fish feed. However, there are also disadvantages. It requires warm water, at least 25 degrees Celsius. It is little known in Europe as a food fish, and cannot compete with fish from abroad as a mass market product. Therefore, the use of tilapia, is limited to niches with special conditions such as tropical greenhouses and aquaponics. The car, Cyprinus carpio, has historically been used for a very long time and is valued as an edible fish. Traditional fish farming in Europe is primarily based on carp. In Asia, colored breeds of carp have emerged, are commonly known as koi carp, and are traded as pets. The advantages of carp are that it is a relatively robust and fast-growing fish. It is omnivorous and can consume a wide range of food, including vegetable feeds. Furthermore, they can grow both in warm and cold water, so, they can be kept outside. However, there are also disadvantages. It is not always highly valued as a food fish, meaning the market price is relatively low. Carp also need comparatively large volumes of water and damage plants if they can reach them, making it harder to directly combine them with plant systems. The rainbow trout is currently the most widespread farmed fish in Europe. This trout species originates from America and has become more established in fish farming than other trout like species. The advantages of rainbow trout are that it is a relatively robust trout species, and well established in fish farming. A wide range of customized feedstuffs, and technical systems are available for this species. The feed conversion ratio is good and artificial reproduction is reliable. It can be cultivated between 16 and 20 degrees Celsius, and grows to harvest size in 8 to 16 months, depending on the system. However, there are also disadvantages, it has a relatively high oxygen demand, and its upper water temperature limit is comparatively narrow, meaning the water temperature has to be under 20 degrees. 
Furthermore it mainly consumes animal protein, and is therefore dependent on fish meal in feed pellets, and cannot be fed 100% pure vegetable feeds. Aquarium fish are very attractive for a show facility for teaching purposes. They are low maintenance species that are generally easy to obtain in pet shops, they can be kept well in smaller systems, and can also be sold if they successfully reproduce. However, depending on the species, they can have a high susceptibility to fish diseases. They can be quite expensive, are not suitable as an edible fish, and require the system to be adapted to their small body size. In addition to the described species, there are other species that are also suitable for aquaculture. These include catfish, eel, sturgeon, and other salmons, such as the European native lake trout, and brown trout. But if you consider the sustainability of your aquaculture production system, omnivorous fish like tilapia, or carp which can obtain all the nutrients they need from small plants, bacteria and algae are a better choice than carnivorous fish that eat smaller fish. A fish farming plant must in each case be designed and operated for specific species. Or alternatively, you can select one or more species which will adapt to the existing conditions. You should, however, note that a fish farm can only be operated economically under optimal conditions with healthy, and therefore happy fish. Thank you for listening.